Welcome to the uh, May 18th Compact. Glad to have all of you here this morning. We um, will have our rebroadcast scheduled. Channel 970, which I understand we're having a little difficulties with the last couple of days, but we'll get that fixed today, he says, we think. And uh, you can see Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday are also on the resident yeah. website. You can watch it at your own time. Call in number 6304. We've got a spring theme throughout today, a lot of butterflies. So Catch Me at My Best this month goes to Katie Reeves. Katie's in security, and she's not able to be with us this morning. Um, story goes on 422, I had two vases of flowers from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church brought to WC. These were honoring my dear wife, Betty. Katie assisted in arranging and displaying them at the front entrance. After a few days, she consolidated the two into one arrangement, still full of beauty. Thank you, Katie, for your special personal effort on behalf of Mrs. Dahlgren. Katie Reeves. All right, I'm looking for construction folks, and there's Lauren. A couple in the back that are coming up now. noticed looking out the window we've gotten a little bit going on here so um, outside we've got steel coming up we are up to the fourth floor um, next week fifth floor and sixth floor will be going on going strong and uh, what they're doing on the inside prior to laying concrete they put all the sleeves in for all the plumbing electrical so you can't really pour the concrete immediately after you put the deck down so that's what you've that's what you're seeing out there we poured um the second floor and we poured one portion of the slab on grade so now they're prepping the rest of the slab on grade which is the first floor um and they're prepping that all week hopefully we get a few good days <laughs> hopefully um and we're keeping on keeping on in there so we're just moving up moving onward getting everything roughed in um, and we're looking to top out shortly which all the the beam you guys signed that'll be pretty close to the last piece we put in so we'll fly that up there uh, do a little ceremony for good luck and uh, put it in place uh, if you're looking for the beam it's down in the lobby of this building Please sign it. Then we'll have you guys be a part of the building forever. So, awesome. Do you want to talk about the renovation? Hello, everyone. So, uh, for the renovation, we got a lot of finishes going on. Uh, flooring is ongoing. No work is ongoing. Um, painting is ongoing. Uh, we're supposed to be starting carpet today slash tomorrow. Um, we're hoping that goes really well because there's a lot of work going on. Um, a lot of the doors have been hung already. Um, hardware installation is ongoing, and we're flushing through all the details on that, all the little issues we have going on with that. Uh, most of the ceilings is, are dropped in. Lights are pretty much complete as well. Um, and we're just going to keep pushing along, and we're coming close. Any questions or comments? Where is that beam that we all signed going to go? The question is, where is that beam going to go um, it is, um, that you guys are signing? It is a six-floor um, roof beam, so it'll be, I'm not sure exactly what part of the building, but we'll let you know when we place it in there, but it'll be on that six-floor roof. What is the flooring? 
The flooring plan for the cafe is tile mostly for that area and then when you transition into the dining area it becomes carpet so the majority of the space will be carpet but right there where we've got um, the, that section right there is all tile you can actually see in that picture we've got the uh, dark brown tile right there um, and then it transitions closer to the entry to a smaller um, square tile which floor will be tied into uh, this structure? Um, it will be our second floor and it's third floor for our side. Do you think we'll be using the cafeteria next week? <laughs> no. <laughs> we are still waiting on our panels for the section so we are looking at getting those next week and it takes about two weeks to tile the face panels and everything's run to those panels but if you looked in there it's a jumble of wires and none of us except for the electricians know where they all go so uh, once they get those panel faces in then they'll go to town on that um, and uh, once we have all of our power then we can start thinking about using that space Anyone else? All right. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Peggy Frangie. You probably figured out, but I am not Ben Smith. Uh, I recently became chair of the <coughs> Wellness Committee, recent meeting this month. So Ben will be giving the report. But I did want to go over the names of committee members with you today because we are your representatives and invite you to bring any suggestions, um, any items you would like to see brought to committee. So uh, we have some new members, Paul DeLeo, Wayne Everidge, and Richards, who is our liaison with the rest of council, and uh, Marianne Booz. Marianne is a Canterbury Club member, and she is going to represent that group. We feel that's a real plus because she and many of the others do participate in the fitness and wellness programs here. The others who will remain on the committee, besides the Smiths, um, Dr. Joe Clark, Sue Gold, Jerry Webster, and of course, Denise Watts is our leader, director of wellness. So uh, she's just, of course, the most vital person to us. So thank you, and uh, be sure to feel free to contact any of us with your suggestions. So I'm going to turn it over to Ben. For the last couple of years, Betsy and I have been co-chairs of the committee, which has got to be one of the easiest committees here because Denise does all the work. <laughs> she does put together a program that is supposed to offer something for everybody at every level and that would be interesting and, and <coughs> promote wellness among us. And we are, provide feedback, commentary, but we come in and Denise has prepared an agenda that addresses this full scope of the program. A range of uh, special lectures and programs that she puts together, employee wellness, staffing, pool maintenance, all those things that, uh, that she has to deal with on a regular basis. The last year or so, a big focus has been on renovations, the expansion of the wellness and fitness facilities, and we've, Betsy and I have gone at one point up to Charlottesville to see what they offered, provided some feedback about new equipment, new, new pneumatic equipment that I think everybody who uses the fitness facilities is really going to like. Um, we will begin that in the autumn, and uh, I think we'll have something that will be much appreciated by those of us who use those facilities and something that's a real marketing asset for, for Westminster Canterbury. 
Uh, again, anybody that's got any ideas, comments, please contact members of the committee. That's what we're here for. Are there any questions? If not, thank you. Victoria, uh, but we will be meeting at 2 o'clock on Tuesdays rather than 1.30. So we will continue on Tuesdays, but at 2 o'clock. So we'll put it in the weekly to remind you. Um, last week we planned to start with safety visits, but we were unable to do that. We had a couple of conflicts. So we will start tomorrow and we will begin uh, with the odd uh, addresses on Westminster Way. Um, I will put the entire schedule out for you as I get that pulled together. So Wednesday the 13th of June, we're going to have a movie in here in the Commons, The Post. Some of you may have already seen that, but if you haven't, please join us. It's Meryl Streep and Tom Hanks, and it had good reviews, so hopefully um, we will enjoy that. Also on the 14th, we're trying something a little different. Um, we're going to go to a Hillcats game. So I had some folks that were interested in doing that, and we're going to put it out there. This is an evening game. It starts at 6.30. Uh, we're going to try to do a few more over the summer, and we'll try to work them in different days, and maybe a Sunday afternoon or a Saturday afternoon, uh, rather than doing the evenings. Some folks don't want the late nights. But um, so if you're interested in that, please sign up. The tickets will be $7, and we will just take that from your account. Um, also, um, on the 27th of June, we will have a trip to Roanoke. We are going to visit the Virginia Transportation Museum. Um, I know some of you are train enthusiasts. And yes, I'm looking at you, Mr. Paul. So um, I think that's the majority of what is housed in this museum. They also have a aviation piece and, um, right. So, but there's a, there's a, a rich uh, rail history in Roanoke. So they um, certainly celebrate that. So after the, uh, tour, the guided tour of the museum, we will be going over to the Hotel Roanoke for lunch. So if folks are interested in that, I would understand it's very nice. They have a very nice buffet. And um, so we will try to um, enjoy that. So um, that's pretty much all I think for the month of June for now. Uh, just look at your monthlies, your weeklies. I try to um, get the information out to you as some things um, become available. So, oh, creative writing. So we will continue with creative writing for the summer. Um, Jason Knebel from BES is going to be available to us. It won't be the same schedule that we have been on. It may not be as frequently that we meet. And he is going to try to have some of the local students join us. But we will be meeting on the 13th um, of June at 4 o'clock in the billiards room. So bring your writing. And if you have not joined us yet but you are interested, please do so. This is not something that is... Uh, sort of ongoing. You can join at any time. So please join us. All right. Anybody have any questions? Yes, ma'am. Are we going to have any more art I, Well, I will work on that. Maybe we can work in a paint and sip for the month of June. So, yes. Or even maybe early July. I'll check. So, any other questions? Paint and sip. All right. Thank you. China and Bangkok in 2006. This promises to be a colorful presentation accompanied by music and an occasional comment 
by Bob and or Nancy. So we, we're looking forward to that tonight. But I think they just got back this past weekend, right? Travel bugs, travel bugs. Um, DMV will be in the lobby tomorrow from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. with their wireless office. You can apply for or renew your ID card, apply for or renew your driver's license, and you can also order uh, disabled parking placards or plates. So with us having um, an election coming up, and we have voting actually coming up in June also, um, but if you don't have a government-issued photo ID, you cannot vote. So if you don't drive any longer and you don't have a photo ID, please go see them at DMV. You can just get a photo ID card that is government issued, which will allow you to vote. Um, Carte Mobile Boutique will be here on Monday, June the 4th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. in the Commons, and they will have an assortment of Alfred Dunner slacks, skirts, sweaters, and other clothing items. They accept MasterCard, Visa, American Express, cash, and personal checks. All of our independent living gentlemen are invited to an ice cream social in the Commons on Monday, June 11th from 1 to 2 p.m. to celebrate being fathers, grandfathers, <coughs> sons, brothers, or just friends. Join resident Monine Wood along with her daughter, Teresa, on Monday, June 11th at 7 p.m. in the Commons to enjoy the 2018 Philadelphia Flower Show entitled Wonders of the Water. The rainforest in its tropical splendor is the centerpiece of this year's breathtaking lineup of gardens and, and artful floral designs. On Friday, June 15th, Susan Carroll will play the harp, John Patch will be on the piano, and Tom Minonia on the bass and will perform at our social hour. On Monday, June 18th at 7 p.m. in the Commons, we will watch part three of The Century in Review that is hosted by Walter Cronkite, excuse me, and it is entitled Invention. You will witness the amazing inventions that have changed our lives and the quirky inventions that seem like a great idea at the time but never succeeded. And one little tidbit they will have is the Wrights Brother flight in 1903. Join us on Wednesday, June the 20th at 11 a.m. in the Commons for a lecture and book signing with Thea Rosenbaum. The book is entitled No Place for a Lady, and it charts her turbulent life from a little girl escaping the Soviet Army with her mother in Berlin in 1945 to becoming Germany's first woman stockbroker at Oppenheimer and Company to Germany's only woman war correspondent in Vietnam. The Cultural and Fine Arts Committee will present Wesley Baldwin and Tracy Cowden in concert on Wednesday, June 27th at 7 p.m. in the Commons. And our trips for June include Lunch Bunch on June the 5th, Voting on June the 12th, the Virginian Hotel on June the 19th, and Station on June the 19th, and the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts is in July, um, but we do need to sign up by the end of June, and that is on the Napoleon exhibit. Um, now, as far as the Virginian Hotel, I looked at that sign-up sheet this morning. <laughs> I think it's already 17 people on the waiting list. So I am going to email him today to see if we can get another trip, possibly in July. Um, but look for that information. As soon as I get something worked out, I will have that in our weekly newsletter. So if it's not in this week, look for it next week, and we'll see if we can add another trip. Okay. So now I'm going to meet Denise. She is on vacation. so. She asked me if I would give her notes, and I was very glad to do that for her. Um, she says the wellness resident of the month is Norm Hammer. So congratulations to Mr. Hammer. 
Essential Oils Wellness Advocate Becky Nelson will be in the Activities and Programs Room on Tuesday, June the 5th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. to meet with anyone who has questions or needs help. Please sign up at the Wellness Board. The Yogaville trip has been rescheduled for Wednesday, June the 6th, departing at 8.30 a.m. The cost is $20 and is on your own. The deadline to sign up is Friday, June the 1st. Join the Soulmates Walking Club for her walks in June. The first walk is the Dan River Trail. You will enjoy a day away and have lunch at Golden Leaf Bistro. Lunch is on your own and you will depart at 8.30 a.m. on Monday, June 11th. On Thursday, June 28th, you will enjoy a walk at Blackwater Creek Trail departing at 10 a.m. Sign up for all walks at the Wellness Board located in the lobby. There will be two wellness lectures this month. Dr. Richard Feynman, Professor of Cell Biology at the State University New York Downstate Medical Center, will present a lecture entitled Carbohydrate Restriction as the First Approach to Diabetes and Metabolic Syndrome. This lecture will be held in the Commons on Thursday, June 14th at 11 a.m. Keep in mind, Dr. Feynman will also be speaking at two other locations in Lynchburg on Nutrition in Crisis, the Good News on What to Eat and Why. The second lecture will be on Wednesday, June 27th at 11 a.m. in the Commons with Dr. Sam Meshkin Pham, MD, with Blue Ridge ENT, and it is entitled, All Allergies Are Not Created Equal. The spa will be closed for routine maintenance on Tuesday, June 19th, beginning at 9 a.m. and will reopen Wednesday, June 20th at 5.30 a.m. Okay, does anyone have any questions? Okay, for these and more, just please see your wellness um, programs and our monthly and weekly newsletters, and we also have everything on our in-house TV and now our resident website. So thank you very much. Everybody hear me okay? Hope you all had a great Memorial Day. Um, we had a wonderful uh, meal yesterday, and thank you all for your service. Just wanted to talk about a few things. Um, we will be having some informational dining plan meetings coming up. Um, Michael um, is putting together the book, and it will be located um, for the sign-up sheets with the times and the days, which will begin tomorrow, over by the library window um, next to the Father's Day book. So please look for that. Please come and bring your questions that you have um, about the dining meal plan changes. And we will have to start with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight meetings between tomorrow and next Wednesday. And then we will add more as we need to. Um, so please make time to come and bring your questions so we will have um, a little bit more intimate time for all of you to discuss those things. So what will we, we will be speaking about is the changes to the dining meal plan um, and a few of those things will be that we'll continue to have a declining balance um, the value will change of that we will have opportunities to still bring our guests and we're asking that you bring all your questions to those meetings so that we can also go over the uh, details with you on of those changes so again the sign up book will be out by the library window for all of the meetings and if we don't have enough we'll put some more We've done about an hour for each of the meetings because we wanted small, intimate groups. Um, and then also would like to welcome you next Wednesday here on the Commons and also on the Terrace. Um, Dining will be hosting um, a champagne punch and heavy hors d'oeuvre um, event. So please come between 4 and 6 p.m. and we'll be, there'll be something on the resident website and also on some signage that will be serving heavy hors d'oeuvres and champagne punch 
from 4 to 6 here on the terrace. So we look forward to seeing all of you there. Does anybody have any general questions for me? Yes, Mr. Davis. Say again, when, when the sign up books for that goes out. Michael will have it put out in the next hour or so. He was working on the sheets this morning, so that will be out probably by the time lunch is over. So let's say by 3 p.m. this afternoon, the book with all the dates will be there. And it's from tomorrow till next Wednesday, and then we'll see how many residents we've gotten through and then make some more. Anybody else have any other questions? It's looking pretty great in there. I hope you're all excited. We are. All right, thanks. Sean told me to tell all of you that he's quitting. Is that <laughs> Oh, he didn't say he quit. He said I was quitting. Is that what you said? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't understand. I didn't hear him. I'll have to get some batteries in my hearing aid. Oh, Sean, put me on the spot. Hi again. So for those of you who do not know, um, I have given my notice the end of July. I am moving back to New England. Uh, my husband's been relocated from the DC office for his company to the office in Massachusetts, so we will be relocating to either Nolan, Massachusetts, or Southern New Hampshire. So I am looking for a job still with Sodexo, so I have 29 years with them, so I'd like to finish up my career, and that's exciting. A um, few towns we're looking at right now uh, in some areas that have good school systems for Elizabeth, because she'll be going into high school, and I'm diligently packing, and have had a dumpster and some pods come to my home and left my home and where pods have arrived and I can't imagine well you all can because you've moved here so how many things you've accumulated in the 10 years that I've lived here so um, I personally thank all of you for everything and being part of our lives in the last 10 years so I won't say anything else because Sean put me on the spot and he's gonna make me cry and then he'll have to hug me, which he hates, so. <laughs> Is there anything else you want me to say? Okay. And then I can get my accent back when I move back to New York. So. Best wishes to Kathleen on her move. That'll be a great adventure for them. Um, hello, everyone. Glad to see you this morning. Uh, welcome back after Memorial Day weekend. I had another busy visit with family. I traveled to Fayetteville, North Carolina this time to visit with my niece and her two children, a three-year-old and a 10-year-old. So we played laser tag and we had sword fights and we went to the local park and we went for a two and a half mile hike in the heat <laughs> with the dog and I'm exhausted. <laughs> No, it was great. We, we had a really good visit. They're really good kids. Um, she's a great single mom. Her husband is on deployment in Afghanistan. So uh, we think about them every day. But that's not why I'm here, is it? Uh, development. What are we doing here? Development. Uh, development department, we're still working on the capital campaign. Uh, don't you want, want you to forget about that? Um, we are beginning to make visits with local businesses. Tom Monona has been a great uh, steward of this process and he and I made two calls last week I think we have two or three calls on the books for tomorrow and we have already gotten two pledges from local companies which we're very very glad to have and uh, I won't give you any dollar amounts but we're working working toward a really good goal for that so uh, Sean's also been making calls so I'm trying to hold his feet to the fire not his favorite thing to do but I uh, just also want to plant a seed for you folks I read an article um, over the weekend about the IRA quarterly distribution that everybody has to take when they're 70 and a half years old, right? Um, if you're looking for a way to help reduce your income taxes, you can designate one of your or all of your uh, required charitable gifts or charitable income from your IRA to a charity, such as Westminster Canterbury and that helps reduce your total income for the year. So if you'd like more information about that or might be thinking about that as a way to make a gift, uh, please let me know. I do have more information on it in my office, but I just wanted to sort of plant that seed if it's you know something that you're thinking about, well, how can I do this and what's the cash flow look like and you know they've changed the tax law for 2018 and how's that gonna affect me? 
uh, let's have a conversation, and uh, I'd be glad to share more information with you about that. Other than that, have a great day. Thank you. Three things to discuss today. Um, one, I want to just step back to last week, last Tuesday, uh, the power outage. So um, when the power first went out, it was told to us that there was a sub-transmission line down towards uh, the dam going down the BES that a tree had fallen on the sub-transmission line. That tree was supposed to be out of their uh, field of vision range, but somehow still caught the line. Uh, we were told we were going to be out two to three hours, and it went five to seven, and I think we ended up about 11 hours without power. Um, truly sorry for just all of us and all of you having to go through this. Um, the generators, when the power went out, both generators came on. Wood's Edge worked like it was supposed to, um, but the second generator, which provides power to Brookhaven, Creekside, Hearthside, and Drinkard, that generator went on, but the transfer switch did not work properly. So the transfer switch did not bring the generator power over into the building the way it should have. Uh, we had groups from uh, Whiting Turner, Moore's Electric, our own guys out here, and probably eight to ten of ten people down. Uh, Ted and his crew, along with those guys down in the maintenance room, working on that. It was about 1:30 before we were able to actually get, uh, I guess, manually bypass that transfer switch and at 1.30 to at least get that generator running to where you had the emergency services of elevators, uh, some lighting in different common areas, um, emergency, critical emergency power function back up and running. Um, so for a number of hours there we were running without telephones as you know, uh, your pendants were not working. Um, very thankful to Ted and his crew along with security doing rounds throughout the buildings and through the campus just trying to check. Uh, we were getting ready and it was almost too late when I had the idea to start knocking on doors. We figured a lot of people were probably in sleep, uh, going to sleep for the night. Uh, but even a lot of our folks just getting up on the floors and just listening to make sure uh, we didn't hear anything. Um, a number of you very good with your neighbors, uh, making sure you were checking on them and letting us know if we needed to check on a couple of folks. We did have to get a couple of uh, nurse runs in there to check on people. But um, transfer switch. So Ted's guys uh, have it set up that if power were to go out today, we're still able to, I guess, if it doesn't switch over, to manually switch it over. Uh, but still today, don't understand exactly why it went down and could not be brought over manually. Uh, hopefully tomorrow we're going to be doing some more testing, so you'll see some power blips tomorrow where we probably bring everything down um, in those four buildings uh, and try to figure out why. Uh, if it turns out that we need to look at investing in uh, another transfer switch, we'll be looking at that as well and getting some prices on that. But that is something that has not happened here before for that extended period of time. We have had problems. Um, when that may not have worked right, that we could flip it over manually and continued uh, running on emergency power, but have never experienced that at that length of time before. Um, Mike Kloss is working on actually uh, running the a second line for redundancy so that the phone systems will also have a secondary power source coming from the Woods Edge generator or looking just to see how much it would cost uh, to get a third generator in here to keep those phone lines up and running. So we're looking at a lot of different things from this. I have questions into Appalachian Power. We've had some conversations. He's offered to come over here and chat. I'm still trying to set up a time that he and I can talk to get a better understanding as to why we just continue to have power outages down on this side of town. The good news is, uh, but it won't come soon enough, is that they're going to rebuild that sub-transmission line next year. Uh, that doesn't help us this year. Again, when we talk about the new health care building, we have two generators, additional generators going in uh, that will provide full power to the creek side, Brookhaven, Harsh side, and Brinker. Thank you. So, um, but we also have to make sure that that transfer switch is working right for all that to happen. So, um, a lot of things we continue to try to work on to make sure this doesn't happen again. Any questions from that? Uh, one in the back, and we have a microphone coming your way. 
What about the power to the cottages? Is that going to be uh, looked at in any way? Power to the cottages at this point in time, we do not have a plan for that. Uh, first thing we'll work on is getting those main buildings um, with the new generators. There is not plans to bring power out to the cottages at this point in time for an emergency backup. But this sub-transmission line will help us and improve uh, power to the entire area. With the microphone in hand, we got one in the back. Please come. Do I understand that everybody but Woods Edge will have full power? Woods Edge has part power. Woods Edge will stay in the same power capacity in emergency events that you have now. The cottages will not have power. You will have the same power system that you have right now with that generator. Means that you'll have a red wall plug and whatever you can plug into it, you can use. Yes, sir. I'd just like to, to ex express my thanks for the power finally coming on. I happened to be up on the sixth floor of Drinker when the power went off. I waited for the generator to come on and it didn't come on. So I stretched out on my wife's uh, lift chair, which happened to have a battery so I could lower it. <laughs> but if you sleep on your side, don't try sleeping on a lift chair. They're made to have your legs straight out. <laughs> Thank you. I apologize, and I was even up in that way and didn't see. I would have given you a piggyback ride back down. <laughs> We did have someone that needed to get back up to the fifth floor from the lobby, and we went through Wood's Edge and brought them up, and they made it up the stairs, but we also had people on hand and, and had discussions of lifting and moving people as needed, so I apologize that you had to do that. But we had a, a number of folks that got in for the Building and Grounds group and some other departments here to uh, just help in situations like that. So is there another question in the back about power? Yes. So future confabs, Ted will be talking a little bit about emergency preparedness. Um, just uh, a couple of things that we want to talk about today. In the future, we'll talk a little more just about different things that we all should be thinking about. Um, but we ask everyone to have flashlight and batteries. Um, purchasing an LED lantern, some of you have those. Those things seem to work very well. Um, I think even when we have generator that's still good to practice in life for all of us to have a trusted flashlight um, some people have flashlights some don't we have a lot of batteries here and we do have some flashlights I bet we probably handed out over 30 flashlights last week um, but also ask you to try to have one on hand um, but again if you need batteries let us know we can uh, bring some to you or you can come down to the front desk no candles Find from time to time people have candles, and uh, that's a no-no around here, especially in the main building. So please, no candles. And then uh, this would not have helped the other night, but under other circumstances, when the generators are running, uh, when you move in, you are given an old uh, analog telephone, and uh, those normally, when the generator is working, will work. I know there's a number of people when we talk about that say, "I don't know where it is." Please try to find out where it is, and if not, we can try to see if we can help getting another one, but it's very important to have. And again, as I said, uh, you know, just please check on your neighbors and let the front desk know uh, if we're able to help and um, get around to check on, and we get around and check on everybody, but if you find someone or know someone, it's just always good to uh, have a good kind of informal network to check on the people around. All right. So moving on to other things, we've been talking for some time now about cell phone coverage in the main building. Um, we are working on what's called, um, working with a company to have a distributed antenna system. Sounded wrong, Cliff, is that right? Distributed antenna system, I don't see Mike back there. Anyway, we have engaged, we had five bids uh, from companies and actually have selected a company. And Mike says I'm correct, the distributed antenna system, which will help provide cell phone service. So we have engaged a company, uh, have, asked, have told them that we would like to work with them and are waiting to get the contract back. 
do not have a timeline on how long this will take, uh, but we're hopeful once we kind of get uh, paper signed that they'll get moving and they have a couple of projects in the uh, about 100 to 120 mile range here uh, around us. So we think that they'll have uh, the people and the manpower to mobilize and get this taken care of to work on that cell phone coverage. We want to and need to work on the main building before we can work on the cottages. So after we uh, get the main building right, uh, we'll then have conversations and try to figure out how much it will cost to work on outside cell phone coverage. And then lastly, humankind. So uh, late last week, uh, received a notice. Actually, we haven't received the formal notice yet. Received a courtesy email saying that humankind has filed for a complaint for a declaratory judgment. If you have someone that is an attorney sitting around you, please ask them what that means after the meeting. <laughs> I will try to tell you what we, what I think it means, what I've been told. So um, this is not a surprise. Um, we were hoping and working with humankind on the easement that we could find uh, on our own a um, solution that we said they could use the easement and the road to humankind um, for this project, but if they wanted to have another project and build more fields in the future, that they would have to use their own road. Uh, they don't want to do that, and with this declaratory judgment, this means a judge or some part of the legal system will be helping us figure out um, if we actually have rights to restrict them using that road or they can use it for all of their charitable purposes. So. Um, whether there's the possibility that could result in mediation um, or if we have to get in front of a judge to figure this out. So um, we should receive the actual official notice, I guess, from a sheriff here in the next day or two. And then we have to respond to their um, written complaints, I guess they are, and uh, we'll work with uh, the system and try to figure out how all this happens. So. Um, again, we knew this is something that would probably come down to a judge to go over the easement agreement, which is now 20 years old, and just try to figure out how we coexist. Uh, in the meantime, we've been working with Hurt and Profit, the civil engineers for the project here, uh, to try to figure out if there's a way to bring the road in that's not so expensive for them so that they can have what they would need. We can have uh, the protection on that road. And we don't have a solution yet, but we continue to try to find a way to work this out. So um, as it stands, I believe their IN1 application to the city is still active and is sitting at the city council level. Um, and I think they will wait and the city council will like for them to know more about the easement and how that will work out before they vote on the project. So uh, for those of you who have been following, I think the city will vote, especially on a conditional use permit for this project to go forward. So it's going to happen. Uh, we just need to figure out the future use of that road. Questions? Has there any, been any discussion about, uh, oh, Has there been any discussion about their using access to Williams Road? I don't want to put more traffic on Williams Road, but they have plenty of frontage on Williams. They do, and, and they have not talked about Williams Road. Um, I think that road up there going through the turn is hard for two cars to get through there, and um, I, I think the city probably, I'm assuming, would look at Williams Road to be similar to using Linden Road. Um, it would prefer for them to use BES Road, but um, I have not directly asked that question, but I can. Other questions? Any other general questions? All right. I appreciate everyone's time today. Hope everyone has a good afternoon. Uh, a lot more information will be coming up in the next few weeks on dining plan. And um, I think we've got something a little closer to where we are today with declining balance. And uh, we'll work with everyone to go through that and get it right. So thank you and have a great day.